Hi there, this is Mina once again, and welcome to the fifth episode of playlist you guys love. That is cool new apps. Now, due to recent change of schedule, I might be a little late to the party, but let's see if I can make it with the content. Now, like always, all the download links will be in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And with that being said, let's get started. Number one, contextual app folder. So CF is fairly new app that does what its name suggests. That is, it can change the apps inside the folder depending on what you are doing, where you are, or what time is it. For instance, when I connect my headphones, I obviously want to hear music, right? So CF will automatically change the default folder to the music one. Now let me show you how it works. Say I want to see all my work-related apps on my home screen the moment I walk into my office. So here is how to do that. Open CAF and then tap on the plus sign to create a new scenario. Now you can select from the various triggers. The most appropriate in this situation is Wi-Fi, location and time. Since my timing are not fixed and I also like to keep my battery juice, I will go with the Wi-Fi. Next specify the application you want to see on the folder and that's it. Now you still won't see anything on your desktop because this application is a widget. So go to your widget section and drag the CA folder in the home screen and that's it. Number second, Brave. So Brave is a fairly new Android browser that is making quite some headlines. But this is not just any Android browser. The app is co-founded by Brendan Arick, former CEO of Mozilla and it is backed by 4.5 million dollar funding. So like Firefox, Brave browser is also open source and is available for all platforms including desktop and iOS. And they are not here to be yet another browser like UC or Dolphin browser. Instead they are going all the way to compete with the giants like Google Chrome and Firefox. So what is the selling point? Well the app claims to be the first browser that blocks all the cookies and ads that are tracking you and replaces it with their own non-intrusive ad. And guess what, the profit they earn from those ads are shared between the user, publisher and the company itself. I will also put the link below if you want to read more about them. So will this model succeed? Well that we will have to wait and watch. But one thing is sure, for this model to become popular you will have to get millions of users which they don't have right now. Number 3rd Chrono Spin So this is more of a fun project rather than something revolutionary. Now what does it do? Well, it is a live wallpaper that shows time and date. But that's not all, there is also a hidden game in it. So if you tap on three fingers, you can customize the clock size and placement. You can also change the color by tapping on the color palette. And this is where the fun begins. If you swipe up in the clock, you will notice a game where you will have to avoid hitting the balls. Overall, it is a good way to see time and kill time. At least this is how the developer puts it. Number 4. Fingerprint Quick Action Now, I am pretty sure this is not the first time you have heard about Fingerprint Quick Action. The app was released 2 months ago and it's quite popular on YouTube already. But it is so awesome that I couldn't afford to miss it. So here is what you can do with it. By tapping on your fingerprint sensor, you can open or close notification tray, quick launch settings or even go to your home screen etc. We tried this application with several handsets that have fingerprint sensor, but unfortunately it didn't work with most of them. Seems like it is only working with the phones with stock UI, like Nexus. But if you are one of those lucky ones, then this application is must have. Number 5. Pulse So I have been beta testing this application for few months now, and back then it was called Messenger. But just a few weeks ago, they have launched it with the name Pulse. So Pulse is a SMS replacement app with nice UI and handy features like blacklist online retailers who spam you with messages just because you have brought something from them months ago. Or you can also use the SMS schedule feature. But the main reason I am mentioning this app here is because of its unique feature that lets you reply to your messages from every platform like on your desktop using the browser extension or even from a Wi-Fi enabled device like iPad and web app. Now I know, you can already do this with push pull it. so why use this application? Well because if you want to send lot of text from different devices, then push pull it subscription model can be little expensive, which comes at $5 per month, whereas Pulse is just $1 per month for this cross-platform feature. The rest of the application is free. Number 6. Talk Type 
Now I don't know about you but I always prefer voice search over the regular typing. It is much quicker. While all the other keyboard app focus on the conventional typing, talk type is the voice first. Yes, you can also use the voice search feature in Google keyboard. But this application prioritize voice over typing. So this app expect you to say words instead of typing it. But yes, the app also understand that you cannot use voice search everywhere. Like when you are in the public places. So for that, it also includes text based QWERTY keyboard. Along with GIF supports from Jiffy, which is nice. For now, the application is only available in United States, which is kind of a funny given that it is made by Baidu, a popular Chinese search engine. Though if you want to track this application, you can sideload it from Google Play, just like I did. Number 6. Flychat So Facebook Messenger is well known for its chat heads, which you can access from anywhere on the screen. And when you are done chatting, simply drag that chat head to the bottom to get rid of it. And well, guess what? With Flychat, you can get exactly same chat heads anywhere you want. Right now, it supports all the popular messaging apps like WhatsApp, Hangout, Skype, Text etc. Though, make sure you customize your notification setting, just in case you don't want the duplicate notification. And on a side note, YouTube has also changed their algorithm recently. So if you don't get notification from my upload schedules, make sure you click on the bell icon in the subscription button. Well, this is all for now. If you like this video, then go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and also let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And yes, if you are a developer who is making awesome app and wants people to know about it, then let me know in the comment section below or even email me. So that's it for now, this is Minal signing off and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, thank you for watching.